Hi everyone, it's me. So today we're talking all about my very first experience at the British dentist. Buckle up. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alana and I am a Canadian, but I have been living in the Southeast of England for the last six years now. And I'd never been to the dentist. <laughs> And I know everybody in the comments is gonna be like, Alana, oh my God, go to the dentist. And you know what? I know, <laughs> I know. As a foreigner living in the UK, I didn't know what to expect with the dentist. I didn't know what to do with the dentist. I was afraid that the stereotypes around British dentists were true. So today we're gonna to cover all of that. And I hope you like it. If you are British and watching this video, thank you, first of all. <laughs> Thank you. If you could leave a comment with your top tip for expats using the dental service in the UK, that would be really helpful. And any foreigners watching, not only can you get some great tips in the comments, but I hope you can learn from my mistakes. If you like this type of content, these types of videos about life in the UK, please feel free to subscribe. If you're interested, maybe give the video a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's go. So let's start at the beginning. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had this horrible sharp shooting pain in my jaw, like the bottom teeth kind of near the back. It just was extremely painful. And I thought, ooh, let's pretend that didn't happen. And then a couple of weeks ago, I had more pain. And it's kind of like, you know, when you're driving and you hear a really horrible noise, like your car starts making a really terrible noise. And you think, let's just turn up the radio. <laughs> That's basically what I did. I thought, hmm, gonna pretend I didn't feel that. And let's just hope nothing bad happens. And then of course, yesterday I woke up with horrible jaw pain. I was convinced, you know, this is real. <laughs> I can't ignore it anymore. And I really need to go to the dentist. Now, as a foreigner in the UK, the dentist is pretty different to what I'm used to back home in Canada. So in itself, it's quite overwhelming because I don't, I don't know what I don't know, if that makes sense. Now, from my understanding, there are two varieties, if you will, two routes you can go down when it comes to dentists. There's either the NHS option, so you are considered like an NHS patient or you go private. Now it seems that a lot of dental offices or dental, you know, how do I say that? Den den dentists. <laughs> it seems that a lot of dentists here in the UK for the most part tend to do both. They'll have private appointments and they'll also have NHS appointments. Um, I know there are still some places that say only do NHS or only do private, but I think that's getting a little bit outdated. Now, what's the difference? You might ask, like myself, what's the difference? So if you have a dentist appointment as an NHS patient, the fees are sort of broken down into tiers or bands. So if you need this particular treatment, it's under this band, which is going to be this much money. And the cost of treatment as an NHS patient is far cheaper. I would assume because the NHS covers the rest of the cost. So you as a patient pay less. And of course, on the other hand, you have private, which would be you book an appointment with a private dentist, or I don't know how you word that. You're, you're having a private appointment. No, that's not right. But using the dentist as a private patient is more expensive because you are not splitting the costs with the NHS or anything. The cost is on you. So why wouldn't you go to the dentist as an NHS patient? That's a good question. When I woke up with this horrible, horrible jaw pain, I called all the dentists in my area and I said, can I book an appointment as an NHS patient? And they said, no, <laughs> not for about five months. So from my understanding, the trick with the NHS versus private is getting a NHS appointment is much more difficult and they do not just accept them whenever. So obviously I was in a lot of pain and I couldn't wait five months to be seen that so my appointment would be a little bit cheaper. So I said, okay, can I just book a private appointment? 
please. Now that was at like 9.30 in the morning. The appointment that I received was at 9.20 the following morning. So I had an appointment really within 24 hours, which is kind of incredible. Now I will say on the phone while booking that appointment, I had to pay 50 pounds immediately, like over the phone charged me immediately. I think what kind of worried me, obviously I'd never been to the dentist and I don't know what to expect. And I've never had dental treatment in the UK. So I didn't know what to expect price wise. The NHS stuff is a lot more comforting because you can straight, like you can see how much is, is gonna cost. Like if I got a filling, it's gonna be in this bracket, in this tier, and that's how much it is. Private, it's a lot more ambiguous. So when I was on the phone and I was explaining, you know, I've got this horrible pain and I think I have a cavity and I might need a filling, roughly how much are we talking here? Just give me an idea. And all she could tell me was that it starts at a hundred pounds. Starts being the key word. So at this point, not much I can do. I have put it off too long. I am now at the point where I just need to be seen by a professional. I am facing the consequences of my own actions. Now, after I get off the phone with the receptionist, my appointment is within 24 hours. I get a text and I get an email almost immediately, which I love technology, basically explaining your appointment at this location at this time. They also sent me a link where I could fill in a bunch of my medical history. So it was almost like a new patient questionnaire, but rather than having to do it at the dental practice, I could do it before I go. So this was really basic stuff like um, personal history, medical history, you know, have I had any major surgery? Can I be reclined in a chair? Like, do I have any illnesses or any, anything that a dentist would need to know before administering treatment that was in there? It only took me a couple minutes and I finished it. So then the next day was my appointment. I got up, I went to the practice. Obviously this is gonna be different for whichever dentist you go to, but my particular one, it was beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful, it was clean, it was huge, it was modern. It was really truly a beautiful practice. So I go to the receptionist, I'm here for my appointment. She checks me in, she says, have a seat. I sit down, very clean, very comfortable. I was a couple minutes early because I'm <laughs> always early. The dentist comes out and gets me right on time, takes me to the little, room, examination room, whatever. At this point, she asks me what my issues are. I say, I've got a really horrible shooting pain on this side. She says, do you know what tooth? I say, I don't, but I think it's one of the bottom ones near the back. She says, have you had any of this? Have you had any of that? I answer all her questions. She gets me to sit, you know, in the fancy dentist seat. She then checks over all my teeth, but especially the part that's painful. We go through each tooth to find the one that's hurting and we can't find it. So she says, let me take an x-ray. While I'm sitting there, she sets it all up, takes an x-ray, takes like, I gotta say less than two minutes, she gets an x-ray. And then literally like 30 seconds later, the x-ray is up on the screen. It's all big and really cool looking and we can see my teeth. And she tells me, guess what? My teeth are perfect. <laughs> So we're looking at my teeth. She's showing me the ones in question where the pain is coming from. She says, your teeth look great. You don't have a wisdom tooth on that side, so it can't be that. Your enamel is all good. The root of all your teeth look great. So what's the issue? She says, do you ever clench your jaw? <laughs> and I say, sometimes. And she says, have you ever had pain from clenching your jaw? And I say, Yes. So wouldn't you know it, I paid 50 pounds for a professional to tell me, girl, stop clenching your jaw. So at this point, yes, I am annoyed that I have caused this issue to myself. But on the other hand, I am so grateful that it is not a cavity with that needs a filling. It, it, I don't need a root canal. I was, you know, kind of thinking the worst and it's not gonna happen which thinking about it does make sense. I have been particularly stressed out lately and obviously I have been clenching my jaw more than I realized or more than I was acknowledging. 
which has caused a problem. And she also said, if I'm waking up with a really sore jaw, then I'm either clenching in the night or I'm grinding my teeth in the night. <laughs> it's like, ah. So the dentist was incredibly friendly. She answered all my questions. They were incredibly professional. The appointment took no time at all, but I never felt like I was rushed. Like they were trying to get me out of there. They answered all my questions. It really was like wonderful. And then I go back out to reception. Is there anything else I need to do? No. So my 50 pounds covered the appointment, covered the examination, covered the x-ray. And honestly, I am fine with that. So really a NHS appointment would have been more like 25 pounds. So yes, I did pay twice that, but it gave me the peace of mind that my teeth were not rotting from the inside out. My, my issue was solved. It was a very pleasant experience. So I really, I'm happy and I really don't mind. So I go to the receptionist, I don't need to pay anything, but I did ask um, about an NHS checkup. So they said they're not booking um, until like April <laughs> at this point, like five, six months, whatever that is. So I said, can I put a, a NHS checkup for that time? They said, sure. We picked a date, a time, and I'm all set. Another thing I would mention that I was quite happy with, and again, this maybe is different depending where you go, but I know my mom and I had a real problem with our dentist back in Ontario. Every time you go like for a checkup or a cleaning, like just basic maintenance, every time they try to sell you and like upsell you, well, why don't we do this? And why don't we do this? And of course it all costs more and you say no you know i think i'm okay i'm not having any issues just just a basic clean please but they would keep selling you like it it's one thing to to mention it and you say no thank you and then that's it but i i know my mom and i have both complained about it where they keep well are you sure we could do this and we could we could also do this because you never you know like it just felt it feels so so much pressure which i did not get at all with my british dentist now, just for like the tiniest, quickest reference, I'm not gonna get into how the dentist works in Canada because this video will be too long. But from my previous experience, my jobs back in Ontario usually provided some level of dental coverage. So maybe that's a cleaning every six months or every year or a free checkup, you know, that kind of thing. So from my experience before, I'd go to the dentist, it would either be all covered or partially covered by my employer's dental insurance plan, you know, that kind of coverage, if that makes sense. Otherwise, I have gone to the dentist in Canada when I no longer lived there, like just as a getting a cleaning and I would have to pay it out of pocket. So the, the whole NHS versus private thing is new to me because in Ontario, it's either, from my experience, out of pocket or you have some level of dental insurance or dental coverage, typically from an employer. But that's just my experience. One of the things I have noticed at various times in my life being a foreigner in the UK, and this isn't necessarily a criticism of the UK, it's just something that I have noticed in that sometimes people think that maybe they can get away with a little bit more, a little bit more selling, a little bit more, I don't wanna say manipulation, but kind of that, because I am a young, naive woman. I don't know what I'm doing, and I have a very visible accent that shows I'm not from here. So cynically, sometimes I think people try to, I don't know what the word I'm thinking of, but yeah, try to manipulate me a little bit more because they think it's easier because I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know. And at the same time, especially with the dentist and being a private patient, I've never done that before in the UK. So I don't know what it's supposed to be like. I don't know how much I should be charged. I don't know if I'm getting ripped off. That's kind of like, unfortunately, a thing that comes with experience. But honestly, overall, this British dental experience has been truly wonderful. I will also say anybody watching, Thank you for lasting this long, by the way. Also, call your dentist and book the next available NHS checkup, okay? Because I guarantee it's not gonna be for a long time. Unfortunately, with the way things are currently, 
globally, if you know what I mean, I'm not gonna say it, but you know what I mean? The dentist, I think, has just been so backlogged and, you know, open and shut and all those kinds of things. So call your dentist. When are they accepting NHS appointments? And book a checkup because more than likely, like me, you're not gonna get one until April or May or months from now, but at least you'll have that in case you need it. And of course, this has just been my experience. It has been a very positive one. It's been a wonderful, positive, private dentist experience, but of course, that is not always the case. So I know some Brits say that private appointments are a ripoff. They charge way too much. You should just do NHS. And some people say NHS appointments are barbaric and they don't take their time. They're just kind of rushing through you because you're just an NHS appointment. It doesn't matter. Some Brits say that the care you receive as a private versus NHS is exactly the same. And the only difference is price. It's really hard to say, but from my experience, NHS appointment, just not doable, not possible. And even though I was really stressed out about my private appointment, it ended up being extremely pleasant, positive. I've had nothing but good, good vibes, <laughs> good vibes only. And finally, if you are still watching this video, please, please unclench your jaw. So that has been my very first experience with the dentists in the UK. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support here on my channel. Every subscribe, thumbs up, comment, all that stuff really does help my channel out. And I really do appreciate it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.